significant figures in calculations. Okay, so we've already discussed how to tell how many significant figures a number has, and now we're going to apply that in uh, calculations. And so basically, remember that the concept of significant figures is used to limit a measurement to the proper number of digits. And we've already learned how to recognize how many sig figs a number has. And now we're going to limit our mathematical results. So if we multiply, divide, add, or subtract, we're going to learn how to limit our result to the proper number of significant figures. So for addition and subtraction calculations, basically we're going to limit that reported answer, so our, you know, our final answer, to the rightmost column that all numbers have in common. Okay, so, um, so for instance, I like to think of that as the lowest number of decimal places. So um, if we have 1.2 and 4.71, so 4.71, then this number, 1.2, has one decimal place, this one has two, so we would limit it to one decimal place. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our two numbers together. We're not going to round this one first. We're going to add the two numbers together as they are. We're going to get our result, 5.91, and then we're going to round it down to just 5.9, rounding to two significant figures, one decimal place. Okay? All right, so again, um, we want to round our final answer to the tenths place, and I can't stress this enough. Don't round the second number first and then add them together. Okay, in this case, it would actually work, but there is no guarantee of that, especially with more complicated calculations, so don't do that. Um, so add the, the numbers that, as you have them, and then round them uh, to the proper number of significant figures or decimal places in this case um, at the end. And the rules for rounding that we're going to use for both uh, addition and subtraction and multiplication and division is we're going to round the final answer up if the last digit is equal to or greater than 5, and we're going to round down if the last digit is less than 5. All right, so here's a little bit of practice. So let's add these two numbers together and then round them to the proper number of significant figures. So take a minute, do that, and then um, we'll go to the next slide and we'll talk about them. All right, so put that in your calculator. And when you do that, you're going to get 119.902, okay? Now, 101.2 only has one decimal place. 18.702 has three decimal places. So we know that our final answer has to have only one decimal place. Um, so we're going to round our final answer to, the, to one decimal place. So let's go up here, 119.9. The next digit is zero. So we're just going to round it to 119.9. So we rounded down. So for the next one, we're going to subtract off uh, 1.013 from 202.88. Um, this number has two decimal places, 202.88, and this number has three decimal places. And so, um, so the calculator would give us 201.867. Now we need two decimal places in our final answer. So we're going to go and look at the third number, and we see that it's 7, and it's greater than 5, so we're going to round the 6 up. So we're going to have 201.87 as our final answer with the proper number of significant figures. All right, for multiplication and division calculations, it's very similar, but now instead of worrying about the number of decimal places, we're going to uh, basically limit the answer to the least number of sig figs that the, uh, all the numbers in the problem have. So for instance, if we divide 23 by 448, 23 only has two significant figures, 448 has three, so we're going to limit our final answer to two significant figures. Um, so let's go ahead and do that division. We end up with 0 0.05133928. Uh, we know that we need two significant figures. Remember, this leading zero is not significant, so we're not going to count it. This one we're also going to ignore. So 1, 2, 0 0.051, and then um, the next number is 3, 
so we're going to round down, so our final answer is 0.051. All right, so the same rules for rounding are used for multiplication and division. Um, and so I've already told you, so the, if the last digit is equal, to or greater, is equal to or greater than five, then we're gonna round up, and we're gonna round down if it's less than five. All right, so let's do a few practice problems here also. So multiply these two, uh, two sets of numbers together, so 76.4 times 180.4, and then do the other one, and then um, that's a division problem, and then we're gonna talk about uh, how to limit the answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. All right, so the first problem. So we are doing multiplication, so we're gonna choose the number that has the lowest number of sig figs, which is 76.4. It has three sig figs. 180.4 has four sig figs. So we have to limit it to three sig figs, we're going to multiply it and look at the, look at what we get. So we get 13,782.56. That certainly looks like all those numbers are significant, but they are not. So what we're going to do is we need three significant figures. One, two, three. Okay. Now the rest of these are going to have to turn into zeros. And actually you can just ignore the decimal place after that. So we're going to need two placeholder zeros here. So we're going to actually round this up to 13,800, okay? And, um, and that's gonna be our final answer. Now, I have a decimal place here, that is wrong, okay? Um, that is probably just a function of uh, putting sentences on my, my board, but that is incorrect. This should be 13,800 with no decimal place. All right, uh, and we're gonna have the same problem with this one, just so. Um, now, the first number has four significant figures here, okay? The second number has three significant figures. So we're gonna limit our final answer to three significant figures. And um, so once we do the division, we're gonna end up with 205,472.5275. Okay. We want three sig figs, so that's the 205,000. So remember the sandwich zero is significant. And then we're gonna have three placeholder zeros and we can ignore the entire decimal part. So again, there should be no decimal place here, okay? This should be 205,000 just without that decimal place, okay? Um, and so anyway, so excellent. So we know how to round down, we know how to round up, and we know how to use placeholder zeros now. Okay, now, sometimes zeros can be very tricky to figure out whether they're significant or not, okay? Um, now, if we wanna really determine or communicate that a zero is significant, we're gonna write it in scientific notation. So, scientific notation always includes zeros in the coefficient of the number only if they are significant. So, look at these two numbers here. So 8.666 times 10 to the sixth, that has four sig figs. So scientific notation makes it really easy to see how many sig figs there are. If we knew that this, like let's say this was our estimated digit in a measurement, so known and then our estimated, all of those are significant. It just happened to be a zero. Um, and so that is going to uh, give us five significant figures. And then of course we have the same power of 10. Um, so if, a zero is not significant, it will not be written in the coefficient. So if you see a zero in the coefficient like that, you can safely assume that it is significant. And so, yeah, it is good practice that if you have a situation like this and you wanna communicate that that zero is significant, make sure you write it in uh, scientific notation. All right, finally, um, let's just summarize a little bit about what we've learned. So uh, significant figures, indicate the number of known values plus one place that is estimated. So the number of known values plus one, um, an estimated number. And we have rules for determining which numbers in a quantity are significant and which aren't. Okay, and usually the trickiest part of that, the zeros. Okay, in calculations involving addition and subtraction, we're gonna limit to the lowest number of decimal places. And in calculations involving multiplication and division, we're gonna to limit to the least number of sig figs in all the data values.